Davey was, I, I love working with Davey, man. Davey was my brother. He was great, man. Um, Davey was a lot of fun. Um, great, great wrestler, man. Guy his size that could do what he could do. I mean, he could, he could kip up. He could do all kinds of things in that stuff. You know, for a guy 280 pounds, 275, 280, he looked great. He could move. He could do anything. Um, you know, I mean, when, when, when I remember when I did the, uh, oh God, what was that move again? Um, where I, I put my arm straight on, he wrapped right around me, man. I mean, it was just, that's a guy, 275 pounds doing something like that and wrapping his legs around you and wrapping his arms around you on the other side. That's an athlete that can do that stuff. Um, Davey, you know, Davey, it, it, I love Davey. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. I love Davey. What was he like outside the ring? Yeah. Was he a nice guy to uh, to get along with uh, behind the scenes? Oh, yeah. David was great. Just um, don't get on his bad side. You get his bad side, he's going to rip you. <laughs> he, he's yeah. going to rip you, man. That's that's just who the, the Bulldogs were. They were that way. You know, I mean, David was easy to get along with in that stuff. Very easy in that stuff. You know, but some people, they just you know, push things in that stuff. Well, you know, you push, you get, you get whatever comes around them. Were you around for the thing with them and the Rougeos uh, before Ooh. David came back as a singles? Yeah, I remember that. Um, I Barb and me were, that's when we just came to WF a little bit before that. We were actually on the West Coast at the time. We were doing a West Coast tour, a smaller one. And the TVs were being done over, I think, in maybe po Poughkeepsie, maybe New York or something like that at the time. And we had to fly. I remember that morning, we had to be up like, we had to be at the airport at 4.30 in the morning. We had to catch a flight from Redding, California into San Francisco that morning and fly from San Francisco across country to New York and get there in the afternoon and they had a car waiting for us and brought us up to Poughkeepsie. So we had just got to the building like about maybe five o'clock, I think it was. And all I remember is um, dynamite coming into our, our dressing room and he like had blood coming out of his mouth everywhere. A couple teeth are missing, everything else. I'm like, what the heck just happened, you know? And to find out that, um, that the Rougeau brothers had jumped him um, coming out of the uh, cafeteria, which was a long feud between those two guys. There was a lot going on between the two of them. Um, and, uh, you know, like I say, man, you know, what goes wrong comes around someday. And they came back to dynamite on that. They, they had enough of it. And, uh, you know, Rougeau's are two tough, two tough kids, man. They're two tough people. And, um, you know, he, I guess from what I understand everything else, he had it coming. So that's life. Now you were both heels for the most part, but did you ever uh, work shock or anything? Never got to work Jacques in that stuff. I would like to. He was an incredible worker. Jacques could work in that stuff. I'd watch his matches and, you know, both him being that and being the Mountie and that stuff. And he did it very well. He's very good at what he did. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please help me out and like this video. Then click the subscribe and get notifications buttons so you don't miss any of my latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Facebook at The Hannibal TV for more live streams and videos. And while you're at it, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Hannibal TV.